In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to this liturgy. I'm uh, so happy to be in your beaming into your homes and your places of business. Um, I hope you all are having a good day and don't get your, your spirits too down. Today's Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Toma Gasparic, Dumika Gasparic, Barika Gasparic, Michael Depache, and Frank Antanchik on his anniversary. Celebrate one of my favorite saints today, too, St. Francis of Paola. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it in the homily. But as we begin this Holy Mass together, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's forgiveness. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, exaltation of the lowly, who raised St. Francis of Paula to the glory of your saints, grant, we pray, that by his merits and example, we may happily attain the rewards promised to the humble. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abraham, when Abram prostrated himself, God spoke to him. My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham. For I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile I will make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you throughout the ages as an everlasting pact to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Canaan as a permanent possession and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, on your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents and the judgments he has uttered. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen one. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died, or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, as people of faith, we listen to these uh, stories about Abraham and Jesus and the great saint we celebrate today, Saint Francis of Paula. And we try to learn from their experience and their words how we can continue on the path to holiness and sanctity, which we all started at our baptism. Saint Francis of Paula was particularly dear to me because he was born not too far from where I was born in Calabria. He, is a, he was born in Paola uh, and uh, sort of adapted St. Francis's rule and made it even stricter uh, and started a religious order of minims. And they um, lived a, a, a hermetical life, so they were much more in solitude. I, I visited the, the hermitage of St. Francis of Paola in Italy and I tell you, it was below the river, and this was a very fierce and scary place, but he prayed there day and night um, to, uh, to, to, to be close to God. You know, a lot of us are alone now, you know, with this uh, self-imposed uh, quarantine, but you know, um, you know, we're never alone as Christians. As we have to always remember, the Lord is always with us. We're never fully alone. So the, the, the presence of the Lord, and that's why the eremitical life makes sense. It makes sense because he wanted to spend a lot of time with the Lord. You might say, well, what a waste of time. He, he could have been helping others. He did help others. His wisdom was so tremendous that the King of France said to the Pope, please send St. Francis, Francis of Paula to, to France. I need him nearby to give me advice. And so the Pope said to Francis, and he was very obedient, he went to France and to be with the French king, but he lived in eremitical uh, monasteries, uh, and he started different monasteries in France where, where men and women could live silently and in connection with God. And what that did for him is he was a tremendous peacemaker. For 25 years, he advised three French kings, avoided all kinds of wars uh, by his humble example, so that our spiritual connection with God in solitude, my brothers and sisters, this is very powerful because it will benefit others in ways that only God knows. Abraham had to put his faith in God. You know, it, it didn't look good for Abraham. He's 80 years old, and God says, I'm going to make you fruitful and fertile. And you could see why Sarah left. You know, she said, us, but they put their faith in God. Abraham and Sarah was the father, not only of the Jewish nation, but all believers throughout the world. And so Jesus called that and, and reminded those authorities at the time uh, of, the, of the Jewish uh, religion, but only the authorities at the time uh, who had this uh, tension with, with Jesus over his teaching. 
And so he was trying to bring them to see the wider picture, that we're all called in God, like Abraham was called, and that our relationship with God the Father is so special and so important and so tender that Jesus said, you know, he's my father. He's my father. Such an intimate way of looking at things. And that's why when he taught us to pray, what a great thing he said. He said, the way you pray is our father. And so Jesus extended that personal relationship with God the Father with each one of us. You need eyes of faith to be able to see this throughout the lives of Abraham, Jesus, and of course, uh, St. Francis of Paula. So we pray today in our own little hermitages at home uh, that we might always remember that we're always with God and that no matter how lonely we might feel at times, uh, God is with us to comfort us and strengthen us. May Jesus Christ be praised both now and forever. Amen. We offer our prayers to the Lord now. We pray for the church throughout the world, especially during this uh, pandemic crisis, that we might lead the world in prayer and in loving action. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that for the great men and women of our medical uh, establishment here in this country and throughout the world, that they may be inspired by the example of the great saints to continue to be there for others, even at the cost of their own lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, the sick, and those who have asked for our prayers. Pray especially for those poor nations that are starting to begin not having the resources we have, uh, that they may be protected in a special way by God's providence. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our faithful departed, and in a special way today, we pray for the repose of the souls of Toma, Domica, and Barika Gasparic, Michael Depache, and Frank Antonchik, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Accept, Father, these our needs and petitions. Hear us through Christ our Lord. Amen. I just have three announcements. What's the Catholic Church without announcements, right? Um, the first announcement is we have a holy hour asking God to end the pandemic. He could end it tomorrow. So we ask God, so tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., we're going to be streaming from the church here uh, a holy hour asking God to help us in this pandemic. The second announcement is that Holy Week is coming. Now, many of you have asked about palms. Uh, unfortunately, we're not allowed to give out palms uh, on Palm Sunday been forbidden by the bishop, and all bishops, really, because it draws people together to get palms, and that's against the whole uh, social distancing that we're supposed to be doing. So we're going to put the palms aside, and God willing, at a later date, we'll bless them and give them out. Also, we do have a schedule that's going up this, uh, today probably, and maybe tomorrow, uh, for the Holy Week. We're going to have Holy Week services, to the best of our abilities, following the suggestions of, of the Vatican office, as well as our bishop, in order to stream and to share uh, those uh, wonderful, beautiful liturgies with all of you in a very simplified and trun truncated way. So uh, join us for that, but you'll see the schedule. Always check our website, always check our Facebook page. Everything we need to, to give you, uh, the announce will be found there. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these sacrificial offerings, that they may profit our conversion and the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received the heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis unceli et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nicholas, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Francis of Paula, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should hand under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be. an act of spiritual communion. My Lord Jesus Christ, I firmly believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament as true God and true man, body and soul, blood and divinity. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Never let me fall away from your holy presence. Amen. Communion Antiphon, God did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. With him he has given us all things. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Be gracious to your people, Lord, we pray, that as from day to day they reject what does not please you, they may be filled instead with delight at your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord.